We are now live. Wow, that was extra fast. I told you, this is like a meant to happen thing. Yeah. All right, here we go, sharing. Navigating the madness. Can you see it on your timeline, Skyler? Yes. It's on mine. Do you see it? Yep. There's I just one made it person public. currently watching. I just shared on mine. Right. Now let's see here. 13 watching. I love that number. It's a, it's a good one. Oh, okay. So nearly there. Let's go there. So that's all set. Perfect. And it looks like we're all shared out. So I'll go ahead and close here. I have one more place. One, one moment. There we go. Did you find it, Amanda? Yeah, it's all done. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We're, I feel like we're just, we're, yeah, the second we came together, we're just so bursty. So I'm really excited to be here with both of you, Jason and Amanda. Um, I'm Skylar, and yeah, I'm ready to just go into um, whatever is present and wants to be uh, explored today. How are you guys doing? I'm amazing. This is like the moment yeah. that I've dreamed of my whole life. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. I just want to thank, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to thank you, Skylar, for hosting this at such short notice, um, for Jason for being so intuitive, knowing that this needed to be done. And um, so thank you all for watching and I hope this helps everybody. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for jumping on short notice too. Yeah. We were talking about this a few days ago. I was like, you know, we'll just see how we're feeling. And then I was like, all right, what about now? Yep, perfect. Let's get this going. So here we are. I actually had a, a craniosacral treatment this morning. And so I had planned to be off today, you know, just taking time to integrate. And I was like, a second it was done, I'm like, I feel like I'm in heaven. So this is just perfect timing. I'm feeling amazing and clear. And yeah, it's just wonderful to be here with you both and everyone here watching as well. I'm glad that you brought that up. That's one of my things that are practical to help people in this time. So that's awesome. It'll, it'll be later on that I talk about that, but cranial sacral is so important. Just it, Even if you just do it like once in your lifetime, it really helps to like get that flowing again. So that's awesome that you did cranial sacral on the perfect day to do cranial sacral. Yeah. And you can even do self cranial sacral, which is something that most people don't know about. So if you can't find a practitioner or anything like that, you can do it for yourself by putting your hands in the back of your head and allowing yourself to just do this. It helps to pump that and it really brings that energy through your body. So what's so cool about today that, that we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about navigating the madness and we're doing it in a practical way because there's so many people on the planet right now that are like, I don't know what to do. Or they're like, I don't have any resources. I don't have any money. I can't do the things that I, I, I want to do. I'm not able to support myself. And it's really interesting because that belief that you need something to support yourself is what actually creates the madness. We don't need things to support ourselves unless we have them. There's this belief that we have to have the biggest, greatest thing in order to support us in the time. But if we were meant to have the biggest, greatest thing to support us in the time, we would have it. That's what need means. So as we venture forward, it's really about understanding ourselves. This is the most important thing I can say today. Like everything else is just going to be stuff to help with this lesson. But the most important lesson is madness only comes when you're distant from yourself. So if you are yourself, madness can't exist. So when madness starts to creep in, acknowledge, okay, where am I not being myself? That's the quickest fix there is out there, guys. If you can remember now, fair enough if you can't, because most people, when they get triggered, they don't have the capability to have thoughts, but you can always go back and be like, oh, okay, I finished the ride that I was just on. I don't know how I got here, but hey, I'm here now. And then go back to where you lost yourself and be like, okay, where was I not being myself and where did that madness creep in and how can I do better next time? Because life isn't about being perfect. There's this belief and there's a lot of pressure that's created in this belief that you're supposed to be perfect and that everything has to be exact and according to plan and all this stuff, right? But you don't know that. You really don't. Like you just have to be in who you are, know yourself and leave room for yourself to grow super easy to do, super easy to do when you're present. Hard part when you're triggered, a 
really hard part when you're triggered. Simple, still very simple, but not as easy, right? So just remember that whenever you find yourself wherever you are in time and space, and you're actually acknowledging that you're present and real again, just figure out when you weren't last and begin to repair the thing that actually caused you to go on the tracks or the ride. I call it the train tracks of the mind, right? Uh, one of the things for, for people that are new, I talk about breaking your brain a lot. And what I'm talking about is breaking those train tracks so that you don't get into autopilot responses and you're able to be present with the moments that they come up as they come up, right? Because in presence, there is no madness. It's actually the absence of madness because you know exactly who you are in the totality of everything. It is in that moment that you're then handed the next level of who you are and you have a choice to either integrate it as I say, stream it through you, or you start to cling to it as an identity or a belief structure of who you are. And that is where the danger comes in. What's really fascinating about the world that we're in today is so many people have clung to these identities so strongly that they're not willing to let them go. And they're the ones that are descending into madness faster than anyone else. One of the other things I'm gonna talk about later on today is about the dangers of spirituality from a, a greater perspective. Because what most people don't know is what spirituality is in this world is an ability to gain depth and dimensionality. In other words, if I can handle this level of an experience and I become more spiritual and awake and attuned, now this level of an experience is possible. So if I can only handle this because I haven't grown as a person to handle the, the newness of it, then my extremes are going to grow instead of my peace. And that's important to understand as well, right? Because if I go all the way to this bandwidth of things, because I've done tons of activations, I've done courses with people, I've done attunements with people, all these things, right? Which are totally fine to do if they're in front of you, right? But if I've gone out of my way to do these things, if I've invested all of my resources in these things, instead of acknowledging me as the greatest tool and then expanding and then working with the tools as they come available in my field, then what happens is I raise my dimensionality or my depth to a point that I'm not ready to process. And this creates a deep level of trauma, which is why most spiritual communities are what are called trauma bonds. They've bonded to each other through trauma. And instead of resolving, they begin to create trauma for others so that they can continue to bully those people into submission. You see, this is why we have to go through this time of madness for the world is because that, that trauma bond that we've created within ourselves and our environments has to break. We can no longer live the lie that we are living. It's time for the age of truth. And the only way to do that is to acknowledge that. So if you are one of those people that is trauma bonded and this is speaking to you and you feel it in your heart, just take a breath, forgive yourself. It's not a big deal. We all make mistakes. And then figure out what you want to do to apply to work through that. Because if you're trauma bonded, then you have trauma. And you're going to be in madness because trauma is a frozen version of you in time and space. So when the stream comes through you, instead of it washing through you, it pushes against that trauma. And that trauma gets triggered up and you become a smaller version of you. And you're not able to hold the frequency anymore. Me and Amanda were on a call earlier before this. We were talking about how humanity is really a frequency generator. We are amazing when we're in our optimum. And here's the coolest part, guys. You don't need anything to be optimum. You don't. Not a single thing other than yourself, your body. That's it. So everything else is a want that allows you to unlock new levels when it's time. And I can't stress to you how important that when it's time part is, because otherwise, you have an experience that's larger than your bandwidth to process, and there's nothing that can happen other than a frozen moment of time, aka trauma. And most likely, you will end up trauma bonding with someone else, and you'll create a community around it, which we call an echo chamber or group think, until eventually you will believe that you are righteous in what you do, and you will no longer be able to see fault in your own life. And that will lead to a whole broad problem for everyone that you know and you. And this time we're coming into, starting tomorrow actually, is going to be pressurizing into those places. It's almost like a surgical strike into those locations of our consciousness to illuminate them in a way that we can't really understand right now, but we'll start to feel it. 
So if you're one of those people, it's okay that you're one of those people. There's nothing to be ashamed of here. There's no shame necessary. All there is is love. The misunderstanding of it is that you have to be something greater. Show up as you are. And as you are is more than enough. And you'll find that your entire world will actually rearrange and the pressure that you feel will decrease and the madness that you're experiencing will diminish to the point where you actually feel present and peaceful for probably the first time in a really, really long time. And that's the beauty of where we're headed. We're gonna get to go through that. We're being pressurized into going through that because we've had all the time that we've gotten, but now we're getting close to the next stage. And because we're getting close to the next stage, there are certain requirements for that next stage. So if you wanna be part of that next stage, take the time necessary to ask yourself, where am I not being present in my life? Where am I in a trauma bond if I am? And the most important question is, where am I not being myself? When you figure those things out, you'll be able to diminish the madness in your life very fast. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, this this timeline that that has been approaching for a couple of weeks now um the signs have definitely been there and and are already playing out amongst humanity um because people are becoming more and more tense you know there's there's a tense tenseness to individuals and and to humanity as a whole um and and so it's just been building very subtly behind the scenes but within individuals in the background for probably two weeks now and and so as these energies that jason's mentioned on his wall um in, increase what this means is is in my terms the frequencies increase and it's a lot of spin within ourselves and it's a lot for the brain to handle so it's it's easy to handle if you've learned how to handle yourself if you've learned the best way for you to handle energy which is your way and that's going to be that when the when these energies come in you you actually feel bliss ecstasy joy but if you haven't managed to find your own way into into experiencing that because you can expand from that then it, it's going to feel a little bit too much um quite a bit too much i'm too subtle sometimes <laughs> in my words um so what this means and what jason's sort of referring to is that there are parts of our personality um or i call it an overlay it's like coats you're wearing lots and lots of layers uh, which aren't you you're, you're not your coats you're not your jacket your t-shirt um it, but those parts um that that you've experienced through through trauma um most likely when you were a child um and and if there are those sort of overlays that they haven't been properly worked on to be dissolved and neutralized within you so that they no longer exist as a reaction to anything um and there's all sorts of reactions you know there's there's boisterous, loud reactions to anything. And then there's very quiet, you know, withdrawal type reactions. Um, but basically these energies are gonna sort of trigger the, the overlays of our personality that haven't yet been dissolved, that have got to go and they've got to go now. And I say that with excitement because of the timeline that follows that. Um, so we've got to get through this. Um, the, the, the point really is, is the way people will respond. It's not who they truly are. It, it, it's just the, the programming, if you like, or the, or the overlay, the personality, identity. It, it's not who you truly are. And it will be a, a temporary uh, timeline, albeit, you know, it's going to play out one day at a time. So it's not going to suddenly go, bam, we're into madness. Um, it, it's going to go like this. It's going to rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. But quite quickly in the next, well, I don't know how long. Jason's got a better idea of timeline than me. Um, but it will be a time period where um, there's no, everybody's just got to go through it their way. 
and they will and and it will be by walking through it in your own steps that will then on the other side of it become your your absolute empowerment of of the true self it's just that these layers have got to go they've got to be stripped away because it's almost like you know we've built and built and built with these energies and we've got to be able to withstand them um because they are us these heightened frequencies are us already yeah. um we're more than, everybody's more than capable um if they can find their own way of of getting through it and my way won't be the same as somebody else's way and um yeah so it's it is definitely trauma based as jason's saying because it will be the patterns or behaviors or belief systems that people still are hanging on to that aren't their true self it's not who you are and, and so they have to be let go of and seen um in order to become that natural beautiful essence that everybody truly is yeah, hundred percent. I love that you used coats as an analogy because <laughs> the way that I look at like light and frequency is like the heat of the sun. And if you're wearing coats and we dial up the heat of the sun, it's going to get really uncomfortable until eventually it's going to mm -hmm. get so much that you're like going to start to burn out sweating too much. Right. But what happens when people get overheated? I mean, they get heated, literally, they start to argue more they start to get shorter right they have that that fuse is, is very small what they can tolerate is very small you're going to see that because mm -hmm. the heat is going to dial up and those coats are going to either come off or the person's going to die of heat exhaustion really like i mean not to to be graphic here but like there's no other option you have to take those coats off mm -hmm. i want to take a moment and talk about this because this is a really important concept here everyone here at some point you've had an experience where you've actually been like okay this is really hard for me to do and then you did it. And then immediately you felt this sense of relief, right? But there was everything in your mind was like telling you, no, you can't do this. It's impossible. So on and so forth. Everyone here has had this experience because you're on earth, but you did decided to push through it. You actually did something at some point and you immediately felt a sense of relief. This is what you're going to feel every time you take one of those coats off mm -hmm. more and more relief, more and more connection, more and more peace, more and more bliss. It's going to be difficult because your mind's going to tell you every reason why you shouldn't do it. But your heart is going to tell you every reason why you should. And this is where you get to make that choice. You're going to listen to your mind, which can't go beyond the fourth dimension, or are you going to listen to your heart, which can go infinitely? You get to decide. And there's nothing wrong with either choice. In your own time, you're going to make the choices you're going to make. Just understand that when the coat comes off, even though it felt like it was protecting you, it was actually weighing you down and causing more and more resources to be spent. Because if you've ever walked around with like 15 or 16 coats on, you know that it's a lot harder to move. It weighs, it literally weighs on your body. Not only does it weigh on your body, it causes you to burn up and sweat, which means you have to hydrate more. Like there's all of these things that you have to do to manage that extra weight that you don't need to carry anymore. Mm -hmm. At one point, it did protect you. It kept you hidden. It kept you safe in your own belief structures. It maybe even it was cold outside. And you were like, I need these coats. You know, there's no judgment. It's simply what it was. But where we're going, we don't need this anymore. And so you're going to feel as it dials up and it's going to dial up fast. Uh, the first part of May, the first 18 days of May is going to be like going on a roller coaster ride at max speed from the top point all the way down. Like you're not even going to realize that you just went through it kind of thing. It's going to be like, whoa, this is so fast. I just got to hold on. I can make this. It's going to go fast. So much information, so many things just being thrown at you constantly. And here's the coolest part. The moment that you feel something's being thrown at you, just figure out where it's landing. Oh, I didn't realize I was wearing this coat. One second, let me just take this off. Huh. And then it won't be thrown at you anymore because it doesn't need to be. You see, the information is not sharp. This is the belief that we have in our mind. It's sharp. It's, it's pushing on me. It's hurting me. It's doing these things. No. It actually is designed to stream through you. As I said before, you're a frequency generator. This frequency runs through you and stabilizes you. But with these coats on, these rigid walls that we've created, they don't stream through you. They pressure you. 
Well, they're only pressuring you because you're not receiving. You're not letting it run through you. Or my favorite, which I see a lot, is that you hold on to it. You're like, oh, this must be who I am. It's like, no, that was a moment of who you were. You are so much more than you can hold in your hands. So stop trying. Understand that these jackets, these coats, these things, they're going to come off whether you are ready to have them come off or not. So if you want to fight it, you totally can. But eventually, it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Bikram yoga has got nothing on what's coming. That heat yoga, nothing on what's coming. You are going to feel the heat. And it's going to be great on the end of it. Like when we're done with all this, you're going to be really grateful you went through it. But it's going to be difficult. And anyone out here who's been on a retreat before, you know, that first three or four days where you're like getting used to people and it's really awkward. And you're like, I don't know if I should share or be this thing or do this thing, right? That is going to be like the next several days for you. It's going to be awkward because it's just going to keep boiling up inside of you until you let it go. It doesn't have to stay that way. These currents that are running through, like Amanda was saying, they are blissful currents. You can ride these things. You can be blissed out of your mind. You can enjoy everything about life. Like you can see the colors. We have arrived in the promised land. This is why we're going through this. We're cleaning up our own misunderstandings and misrepresentations of what the promised land was. We always thought that we were going to arrive and it was all going to be done for us. That was never the case. It never will be the case. We have to do the inner work to align with the world that we live in. Yeah, it's messy. Yeah, there are these things, but you can't just jump timelines and not take care of the thing. You can't sit in your house and let the bills pile up and do nothing with your life. That's not okay anymore. We're not able to live in that way that we once did. We have to look at the world and be like, this is our world. What are we going to do about it? And that's the beauty of what's coming. When we take off all the jackets, we're not just going to be like, what are we going to do about it? With like this like hesitancy. We're going to be like, what can I do about this? This is going to be awesome. Like, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do next? Because that blissful current is also your divine intelligence. It's telling you the greatest things that you can accomplish in that moment. You just have to listen. You have to be in tune. And those jackets, they... They make it impossible to hear. It bounces against that jacket instead of actually coming through and, and coming loud and clear and feeling that divine inspiration. For the longest time, we've forgotten the divine inspiration even exists on this planet. So soon, we're not going to forget that anymore. It's going to become part of our daily lives. Imagine how wonderful that will be when divine inspiration is your life. Yeah. Um, I, I, love that, I love that with... with you know, the way it's coming through, it's all about coats and, and jackets and overlays, etc. cetera, is, is that, you know, <clears throat> as things do hot up or heat up, it's to, to notice within yourself when you're resisting uh, because um, resistance in, in utter truth is a form of control. You know, when we're talking about the energies coming in, which are going to create a faster spin which means our minds are going to race even more than they have been doing this year um where we've got these incessant incessant thoughts and you just can't keep quiet in in your head but just notice um when these energies come in if you're resisting them mm -hmm. because it's like jason says you can be like the river and and just flow as the water down the river meaning there's going to be some beautiful points where it's just meandering like that and then it's going to be down the waterfall mm -hmm. through the rapids and then go into click you know a, a, a small smell of of calmer waters but it's noticing what you're resisting because we all uh, when when we came into this experience um and and everybody descended into that forgetfulness um, it's almost like humanity decided to put on these armored coats in order to protect itself from every other human being on the planet. Well, it, it really, truly, truly is time to realize why, why on earth have I had this armored jacket on all of my life? It, I don't actually need it. And then another person doesn't actually need it. And another and another and another. And then before we know it over some linear time, um, people are going to 
think, well, why did we wear them in the first place? We didn't need them. You know, the, the, and that's that aha moment was that you were always underneath it all. Um, and, and it is time for, for this beautiful, precious, precious nature that everybody is to be allowed out. Um, but we can't, we have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not about um, it for us um, or pressurizing us into doing it. Um, it. It is about us just truly going within ourselves looking at our resistance, where are we trying to control ourselves? Where are we trying to control other people? Where are we trying to control our life? Why are we even trying to control tomorrow? Let's just, as soon as you come into the present moment, which is the divine gift of, that everybody has, is this present moment. All that resistance goes. All those overlays, those coats go. And you can just be at peace and allow the energies to just pass through, knowing that everything we experience as we're experiencing through the human being is temporary. Temporary. But your presence is eternal. Absolutely. Ooh. I love what you're both sharing here. Just, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. And I like what today in my session, actually, when I first laid down and, you know, practitioners kind of checking out my, 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 you know, my feed and like, how's my, she's like, wow, you dropped into still, still point or stillness point, whatever they call it right away. You actually did that this time very easily. And it was like, oh, wow, I can do that. I can like have my mind running a million miles an hour, but be able to lie down and just no, I'm here. I'm present with myself. I'm ready to receive in this moment. And that's it. And just find that stillness and that peace. And that's possible. But we have to train ourselves to do that. It's, it's not, you know, it's easy to get lost in what do I need to do or those resistances coming up and things getting pushed on. So yeah, the only one that can really do it is, is yourself um, and learning how to, to work with these energies and yeah, ride the wave. Um, it's all possible. And it's like, I love what you said about it not being just like, you know, everyone expects to kind of just be there, you know, but it's not a snap of the fingers. And I'm a sovereign being in this like blissful, you know, timeline that I want to be in or, or whatever it, it does take. Um, it does take that work. So and it's possible. And it's beautiful. I think the other the other thing that's um, we just going by what you've just said, Skylar, because I love what you said, all of it, is that um, f f for people to remember, if if they possibly can, that in every single moment we have choice. Yep. So we can choose to uh, react, be stressed, be in anxiety, be angry, be um, upset, or or we can we we have the energy ability because we're consciousness to just switch, it's almost like switching channels within you and just come back to present and then choose to be in peace. Choose to have no thought. Make that a choice of having no thought in that moment. Choose to not be thinking about that particular subject or focus. So we can make these tiny, tiny choices instead of, um, you know, read in the newspaper or social media, uh, uh, the bad things, we can look out the, the out, out of the window and, and look at a leaf blow on a tree or a flower in a vase um, and look at the petals and then and look at the detail of it. We can choose in any moment what emotional state to be in. We have that absolute ability and it becomes easier and easier and easier just to go like that. And it, it's a split second change from this perception to this perception. And then from this perception, it's just <laughs> this, <laughs> if you want it. Yeah, if you want it. Very well said there. Because I think a lot of people, they identify with trauma as who they are, right? They, mm -hmm. they I am this thing. And I will always be this thing. So what's the point of even trying? Mm -hmm. I don't matter in the grand scheme of things is their belief. That's the actual underneath it, underneath the trauma 
is I experienced this, so I must not be important. And because I'm not important to myself, the world won't treat me with importance. That's how it works. Like if you truly don't understand and love yourself, the world has a really hard time showing you that love in return. And that's the key is really just like in those moments, acknowledging that. Like she's saying, it's, it's literally a perspective shift. And it's not that hard to do if you're able to be present. But getting present, that's hard because when you're present, the world will like smack you. And it's not actually smacking you. It's actually tapping your coat. But because you've worn that coat and you've it's hardened because of all the sweat that you've sweat into it, it's actually become like fused to your skin. You don't know the difference of where the coat is and where you are. You can't tell the difference anymore. And so when they tap that, you're like, oh, that's painful. It's only painful because you put the coat on because you had a wound there. And instead of treating the wound, you're just like, I'm going to cover it up. Nobody can see it. I'll be okay. And you just kept doing that. And then you started tearing holes in your coat because the light kept shining through. So you just put on another coat and be like, well, no one will know that there's a hole there. It'll be okay. And then it just kept burning through, kept burning through. And now the light's going to get so strong in these next few months that it's just going to melt your coats. You'll, like, you'll be like, I've got a coat. What just happened? I'll just buy another one. I don't understand. And, and that'll be your life. You'll literally not be able to put one on anymore because the amount of change mm -hmm. will occur. What's cool about cranial sacral, I've, I've had it done myself, is whenever you do self cranial sacral or you actually go and get cranial sacral, you actually begin to pump your synovial fluid through your body and actually create the space where this stuff that's been stuck that's causing you to have a lot of problems in your body begins to move. And this river of light in your body actually activates. And so all these chunks of debris that have been slowing down your connection begin to move out and you start to feel more connected. You start to feel more love and less fear, actually. It's a pretty magical thing. But as you continue to do these treatments for yourself, whether with an individual holding space for you or you personally, right? Because again, you can totally do it by yourself. This process occurs where you begin to become more and more present because you actually now have that light channel running through. So now you start to see the coats from this perspective up and this perspective down. So you're actually able to see the layers of the coats. Because again, what I consider grace is when we have the inner light shining and what I consider enlightenment is like the external light shining on us, right? So when we have grace and enlightenment, we begin to look at the world differently because we can't not. Everything that is not us is actually encapsulated with light and it's just melting away. That's the cool part about being on the promised land. The earth itself's resonance is so strong now that it sends a pulse through all of your clothing, your shoes, everything, because there's nothing that can stop it anymore. It's that resonant into your body and begins to start creating an internal harmony. You know, nature has always been your friend. It's, it's here to show you things. It's here to help you with things. So as your the light shines through your body, what occurs is you start to see the clothing from the bottom up. And as the light starts to shine from the heavens down, you start to see it from the top down until eventually you can't not see it. You see, this is when choice really becomes very clear. You either choose to try to ignore it, which won't work, or you choose to work through it and let it dissolve. Because again, these coats don't define you. Whether you're wearing a Louis Vuitton coat or a star seed coat or uh, MTVO coat or anything like that, it's not who you are. It's your belief in who you are. And it's like holding on to sand at this point. It's just going to keep falling out of your hands. So the harder and the tighter you clench it, the more stress you're making for yourself. Just let go. Mm. Truth of who you are is like a butterfly. It lands in your hand and then it floats off. And then another one lands in your hand and it floats off. But when you try to hold on to the butterfly, you kill it. You kill the truth by trying to hold it. It's one of the reasons why one of the poems I wrote is talking about being a fountain. You know, it's not, it's not hindered or held. It's, it's ever flowing mm -hmm. for all equally accessible because that is our goal here on, on life is to become a spring of truth in a desert of lies until eventually the entire world becomes springs of truth and we live in Eden again, you know? And the beauty is that this flood of light that's coming through is going to help us to clean up the pump inside of us so that we can begin to 
pump out truth again through our field. And then we become a source of refreshment for the world around us. We become a support structure for the world around us until all are free and each are freeing each other. You see, that's the beauty of reflection and fountains create that for us. They give us an ability to reflect on wisdom. It's not that somebody's wisdom is better than yours, but other people's water helps you just like your water helps them. We learn different things, they're differently coded. I am not Amanda and Amanda is not me. And I am not Skylar and Skylar is not me. And all of us together created this opportunity for you guys. We all are here equally valuable, sharing just our own truths and our own perspectives, which is what's really important to understand because my truth and my perspective is not yours. It's not hers and it's not hers, it's mine. If you gain something from it, apply it. See if it works for you. If you gain something from Amanda's, apply it. See if it works for you. If you gain something from Skylar's, apply it. See if it works for you. See a little pattern here? It's about you figuring out what works for you. This gateway into madness, this opportunity that we have to let go of the coats all at once in a faster way that we've ever had as an opportunity, and it is an opportunity, will only work if you do it as you, not for anyone else but as you, for you. And that's the invitation here today, guys. Just mm -hmm. take the time to say, do I even want to let go of these coats? And if the answer is no, that's okay. Ask yourself, why don't I want to let go of these coats? And then start there. I don't want this to sound like this is one of those things where you have to be done right away. So you have to sprint to the finish line, go get your dimensionality maxed out as fast as possible and just deal with the new, the new trauma as you put more and more coats on to try to hide from the awareness that you've created. No, that's, that's not what this is about. This is an opportunity to be aware of something that's been running you for a really long time that you don't know about. This is a kindness. And the only way that you can actually receive this kindness is to be yourself, mm -hmm. to begin to actually do the work and no one can do it for you. That's the lie that's been perpetuated on this planet is that other people can fix you. They can provide solutions that you have to apply you have to apply. They can only provide the solutions. You have to figure out what it means to apply it because application doesn't look the same. I might tell you to do 10 jumping jacks and you might ask your body and be like, yo body, do you wanna do 10 jumping jacks? Your body's like, I only want one. You're like, all right, cool. I'm gonna do 10 because Jason said do 10. And then all of a sudden you message me, you're like, I don't understand, I feel horrible. I'm like, how many did you do? Did you ask your body? I was just giving you what I was doing. So work on what works for you. Bring your body into the experience. Talk to it. Love it. It's a child. It, it misses you. You probably haven't connected with it in a while unless you know to connect with it. One last piece of advice that I have. This is something that has helped me tremendously in my life. I always ask, is this good for my body? And then I always ask, is it good for my frequency? And if it's not good for both, I won't do anything with it. There's tons of things out there that are good for my frequency, which means they're going to expand my awareness. And there's tons of things out there that are good for my body, but there's very few things that are good for both, which means that instead of aligning my awareness like this, when my bandwidth is this, and I get into trauma, or aligning my bandwidth with my awareness is like this, and my awareness is here, and like pushing against the awareness, which causes trauma, I, I really like to just not create trauma for myself. I don't know. I'm weird like that, though. I've, I've always been a weird person. It's kind of like, do I really want to put this coat on? No, nah, not really. So you get a choice. If you, if you use that tool, if it's, if it's in front of you to use it, you'll be surprised at how many things that you own or that you take that are actually not good for your body and your frequency. Because we naturally get pulled in moments to buy things for our body or for our frequency. But we never really think about combining the two, working together, collaborating as one. That's my, my biggest piece of advice for you guys. I know that we're coming to a close here because it's starting to get dark for Amanda over there. And I, I know that that you you like uh, I mean that's that's beautiful I love that I get to see the sun setting. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then there was light. <laughs> yeah, and and then there was light. Yeah, but I, I kind of want to take this time to really just celebrate that we were able to to come together and and express in this way, and that this is your journey, everyone out there. Like this is a celebration. This is not the end of the world. This is the beginning of what we came for, and this is going to be a, a harder time for some people. 
and have respect for those people and that that stuff. If you're not going through the hard, if you're like in the bliss bubble of enjoying life and you're not wearing any coats and it's not hot for you and you're just like enjoying everything, then when you see somebody suffering, just smile at them, you know, just share a little bit of extra love and, and, and light for them. Be that fountain if you want, right? But understand that they're going to go through stuff and you can't fix it. You can't. Your job is not to fix it. Your job is just to be there as an example and have faith that they are on their journey perfectly. So what I would like to, to do as a closing thing for the fun of it is offer one suggestion for how you will navigate the madness. And if you guys are in the chat right now and you want to share your suggestions, I encourage all of that to be shared and played with. I, I would love to just do that if you guys are open to it, just sharing one tip for how you plan to navigate the madness. I'm just doing one, Jason. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm, I'm not going to give what I would call the, my, you know, my, my immediate greatest tip for myself, which would be to breathe. Okay. <laughs> you know, inwardly to breathe. Um, but in terms of this specific timeline that everybody enters, my greatest tip would be to not get involved in that which is outside of you, meaning another person's stuff, another person's trauma, another person's uh, shock, another person's belief system, reaction, blah, 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 is because th that person at soul level, think of their soul rather than the human being, has chosen to have that experience for the soul and it's only going to be temporary. So who would I be? Who would you be to deny that soul their experience is only temporary and they've chosen it. So it's this non-interference is the highest choice one could make during this period, knowing that it's just temporary. Apart from which, if a person is in um, an intensity, there's nothing you will be able to say or do to help them through it because they, the timeline is designed so that they get themselves through it in order to free themselves of um, the, the sort of traumas that they've held on to and the um, overlays or overcoats they've put on to hide the trauma and to make sure they don't get hurt even more. So they put more and more coats on um, to, to safeguard themselves. So it is a time where all of that's going to come off them, their way, not your way, but their way. And if you times that by 8 billion people, there's no one has the right answer for anyone. You just have the right answer for yourself. And that is all you need to be concerned with during this period is how am I, where am I, meaning am I present? Uh, why did I react that way, et cetera, et cetera. Just be in your own world and allow others their journey. Trust, trust the passageway. Excellent. That was pretty much what I was going to say. So <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Also, now I have to think of another one. So Skylar, you want to go? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I also thought of a few different things. I love that, Amanda. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and it's like the more we do that for ourselves and we're naturally those examples, right? Versus needing it to do it for somebody else. That's as hard as it is sometimes to not want to jump in. And I, I have that tendency sometimes. So thank you. Um, yeah, for me, actually, what's coming up is fun, creating fun time for myself, because that's something I don't tend to do enough. And I'm even realizing in this moment, I actually ordered a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Sam for mentioning it on our last live. And I'm really, it's actually sitting downstairs. I'm going to go out, grab it after this and um, yeah, start creating that fun time for myself. So doing that more and, and creating those moments for myself versus, you know, the, the social media scrolling or overworking or whatever, I think will be really helpful to just create those fun moments for myself and possibly with others. But again, I really just think 
just having some time with myself feels like a lot of fun to just explore and enjoy that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Sounds awesome. Yeah. I love video games, so <laughs> excellent job, Skylar. Excellent Thank job. you. It's overdue. Uh, <laughs> I've been talking about it for a while, so. <laughs> for me personally, I think it's body for me. Like the more that I, I tune into what we're about to go through, the more I feel like my body is the thing that wants the most support. So that thing that I was telling you guys where you put your, your fingers like this interlocking into this point where your skull meets and you just gently move your neck back like this and just allow yourself to do that and then massage your neck afterwards and then just do that again, just like for five minutes, it will do wonders for you. The other part is working with your foot. There's a spot between your toes, your big toe and your other toe and just wiggling it back and forth will actually help to break up the energy there and it will help you to ground easier so that when you do unlock this channel and you, you bring that light back through your body, it actually has somewhere to go and ground. So I would say, you know, just doing like a, a little five minute container of working with that. And then as you, when you start this, you'll start to feel like, oh, oh, I might have tension here in my arm too. Just do some self massage there, right? but really just make room in your body is, is my, my main thing. Like as, as I feel into it, I'm like, yep, that's going to be it. And a lot of rest, a lot of sleeping for me, a lot of sleeping, a lot of body massage, just enjoying the ride because it's not about changing the world. It's about helping my body to make it through the changes that the world's going to go through. Love it. Uh, that foot thing is standing out to me because I've been doing a lot of physical practices and noticing like swelling in my like legs and like having to do like massage in my calves and my feet. And I'm like, how can I release this energy? Why is it all just like building? So I feel like that'll probably help with the flow. So thank you okay. for sharing that. Do we still have the wiggle wiggle video? It was a private one, but I mean, if you're open to share, I thought of it. And then I was like, the moment of it, maybe we could just share it. I think people would laugh as well as it would also demo the, the concept. I want to, I'll see it again before we post it, but I'm almost certain that there wasn't anything super private about it. So should be okay. Sounds good. Or you could just do it again right now if you want. I, I could do it again right now. I'm, I'm actually sitting cross-legged though, and it'd be like a whole thing. <laughs> I'm not just good at it. Yeah, it's, not it's like okay. It. We'll, we'll look into it and, uh, and share it if we can. All right. Well, I, I don't want to go, but I also feel like we've really expressed and shared at the point that, you know, like any more would just be like kind of dragging it, you know, I, I feel mm -hmm. very complete, but if you guys want to say anything else in closing, I, I'll just say, I love you guys. And I'm so grateful that we were able to jump on today and just discuss and share. And hopefully everyone out there that's watching this helped you guys a little bit in your journey and remember applying means you have to figure out how to make it your own don't take what we just did like if this for you you do this and you're like oh actually that that hurts then do something else just work with your body talk to it get to know it hmm. yeah um i'd just like to just sort of say you know regardless of of we've covered things quite quickly tonight um but it's actually a huge huge subject as as you know um but it just to also remember that everybody will be going through it to different degrees mm -hmm. so um you know some people will experience a massive massive intensity or imbalance um whereas somebody else might not and and it's not to judge any of it um it, you know there's nobody doing anything wrong or right through it it's just that um it, you know we're all having our own unique experience through it and just to know it it is temporary and and then we we come through it um but it, it's designed for the for the highest good of humanity because you know imagine the world which probably people have always wanted where you know everybody can be themselves and they don't need all these um, false identities or false um, security blankets wrapped around them um, so that they don't get harmed. But actually a world where everybody really is themselves because they can be. And um, we've lived for eons of time thinking it's not safe to be who we truly are. And 
it's coming time for that and that's why it's happening so just have if you can uh understanding and compassion for anybody that may go through it more intensely than yourself and then have understanding and compassion for yourself if you go through it too yeah human kindness anyone that hasn't seen everywhere all at once no anything and everything everywhere all at once everything everywhere all at once highly recommend it's probably the best movie ever made i i'm stuck between interstellar tenant and that one at this moment <laughs> that's how good it is so anyone that knows me knows that that's a very big deal it's designed perfectly for this world we actually like had a celebration in the theater after it was over people were just grateful to have shared space with each other. I haven't seen that experience since like movies first started being a thing. So it was really cool to, to feel that connectedness of what that movie really unlocked for the group and just to like have a celebration afterwards and to spend those moments with people. It was, it was a powerful thing. So that's a great film for those of you out there that haven't seen it. We'll post a, a thing I'm sure by now it's already posted because <laughs> everybody on the team is just rocking it these days. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that movie is so epic. I'm so glad I got to see it and in the theater. And I was sharing with you, Jay, like in the, it just for a theater to just go completely silent and everyone's just in the moment and feeling it and like the codes and the healing and the expansion. It's just, yeah, it was really next level. So I can't um, imagine watching that movie at home. Like no. I would have missed out on so much value had I had I seen that movie in home first. Like that's an in theater film for sure for anyone out there that really wants to, to experience that. It's it's life changing because the unlocks cause everyone to be in presence at a point, and then like you're just like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> We're all present together, an entire theater of people. How is this even possible? And it, it's this magical experience. Uh, I just I hope every one of you guys get to experience it. If it's something that you want to, obviously. But it's a movie for, for anyone out there that doesn't know what I'm talking about. And I butchered the name so badly. So <laughs> glad that Skylar stopped this. Yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, speaking of trauma and this time that we're in and going into, I, I can see how it, it really helped me and it will help others because like it brought up so much where I could see like when we're talking about the trauma bonding and like, you know, lineage stuff or whatever and just being able to see it and to see it come up in with myself. And it was difficult at times, you know, to, to process through that, but it was so helpful. And yeah, anyway, I won't go into, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Yeah, but it's hard not to <laughs> spoil that film because it's such a good one. Every discussion I've had with people after they've watched that film has been one of my favorite discussions I've ever had. So it's, it's phenomenal film, phenomenal film. Amazing. Do you have anything you want to say in closing, Skyler? Um, yeah, I'm just also feeling really grateful to be here with you both in this moment. And yeah, still super heart bursty. So I love you both. And thank you so much. And I feel, yeah, just to echo what Amanda was saying about like, you know, to just honor where people are and understand that it's going to be different levels of reaction or whatever comes through. And then also to not judge ourselves. I love that you said that because I was thinking it too. Um, because like, you know, and what you said, Jason, earlier about this level of or needing to be perfect, you know, like, let's just like we're human and let's like be gentle with ourselves and give ourselves a break and maybe like some self hugs and just be really gentle with ourselves through this and whatever that looks like for you. So, yeah, um, that's all I'd like to share. And also we got this. I know sometimes yeah. the energy updates and seeing. 5,000 to 8,000 data points within a few days. What do you mean, Jason? What's going on? And it's like- Yeah, it's going to be wild, be wild for sure. One last thing there with what you just said, that's super important. You actually can't experience true connection if you don't show up as yourself. So what actually happens is you end up in relation because mm -hmm. you're relating to something and you're not showing up as you. But in true connection, you show up as you and you relate from you into the world. And that's what actually causes real connection to expand and unlocks new levels of everything. Literally everything unlocks when you're in that true connection with yourself. And that allows you to be in true connection with others. So that is so important, which the thing about that is you come as you are, not as you want to be. That's super important. If you come as you are, laws and all, then everything changes. 
when I was when I was younger, Dr. Seuss uh, wrote a thing, and it was like it was life changing for me. It was like those who matter don't mind, and those who ma uh, mind don't matter. And I, I really took that to heart and just like unlocked so much in who I was because of it, because it's a statement that that really changes everything. It's this part, and then I took it further, and I said, okay, well, the, the world manifested me as me. Every aspect of me, not just this version of me or this version of me. They manifested me as me. I came to this world as me, for me, to share me with the world, and they did too. Why would I be something else? All that does is screw up what they're trying to manifest. All that does is screw up who I am and what I'm trying to manifest. Like All it does is corrupt the signal, so why would I do anything else? And that's something that's really fascinating. Anyone who's ever met me in person, you're like, there's no way that this is who he like who he's on the screen. There's no way he's that in person. No one's that animated. No one does this kind of stuff. I absolutely am all of this. This is, I don't change. I just, this is the camera. This is me. It's a moment in my life. But I'm I'm the same person regardless, right? Because I don't understand why we wouldn't be. When we are something else on camera that we're not in life, we can't upkeep it. It creates a coat, just like uh, Amanda was saying. Like now you have Jason who's on camera. Oh, I am perfect, everyone. Feel my perfection. No, this is Jason. He makes mistakes all the time, like yeah. all the time. I, I I love making mistakes. Actually, I learn a lot. So give yourself permission uh, to show up as you are. I uh, I feel what you said, Jason. Adore it. I'm so glad you've mentioned that. And you know, to end on that is is that it, it is when you're when you're usually with yourself and and being that pure true self to you whether that's your vulnerable whether that's your you're upset whether that's you're in despair or whatever but that true that that sort of authentic state of what what you think you are is is actually what gives you the true connection to what you are i'm probably explaining this in a really rubbish way <laughs> but but it's it's by showing up as as authentic as you can be in that moment for you that your true connection comes to you comes into you and and in a way i i would love i'd love to sort of say that after we get through this period, um, whatever period, time period it's for, it, it's almost like that authentic nature that you show up as you are. It will be the new currency for humanity. Um, and because it, after we get through this time period, bear in mind, everybody is going to get through the time period um, they will also know what true authenticity and that genuine nature of each other is because they found it within themselves so all the all the false identities and the false overlays all the coats again they they, they have to go because it, you know if they don't it, it's going to be very obvious i mean it is now it's, it's obvious now who who is um you know sort of putting on a show or pretense or who is just being their authentic genuine nature but once we get through this period that everybody goes through you get to literally just show up and feel safe because you you always were safe you just thought you weren't safe and so you get to feel safe just being the the true authentic you whatever that is whatever it is everybody will will love to recognize that true authentic you that that you chosen to remember amen i can't say anything better than that so perfect yep agreed <laughs> i love it and it's because you show up as you that's what i love about everybody here you know we make mistakes but we honor those mistakes we grow through those mistakes and we're open with those mistakes we're not trying to be perfect people we're just trying to be ourselves as best we yeah. can and yeah. somehow navigate life while doing that and it's it's a magical uh journey I, i'm not complaining at all like I love it it's just that's the struggle is like can I be myself in this moment okay cool can I be myself in this moment okay cool and then eventually it becomes kind of secondhand nature and it's actually harder not to be yourself than it is to be yourself but 
we were inverted for a really long time. So if you find it very difficult to be yourself, that's perfectly normal. Work on it mm. and you'll be there. You'll be there faster than you can imagine too, because everything is supporting you now. There's nothing in this world that wants you to be anything other than you now. And as we progress forward, you're even gonna get more and more support in figuring out who you actually are. This is the greatest time in the world and you get to be alive in it. So congratulations everyone. And thank you so much for this amazing live. I love you guys so much. I had so much fun and I can't wait to do more of these in the future whenever we're on the other side of this thing. Cause I know that we'll do another one. I know we will. When yeah. we do it, I don't know, but we'll do it and it'll be awesome. And we'll all be celebrating and it'll be great. So. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Skylar, for hosting us. Thank you, Amanda, for showing up on such short notice and just being your loving, awesome, epic self that just changes the world. And Skylar, that smile, that's the reason. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. I love y'all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>